Hey everybody, welcome back to Mixing Music Analog and MixingMusicAnalog.com and here on the YouTube channel. And today we're going to do another gear demo slash review. We are going to take a look and a listen to the Audioscape 260VU Stereo Compressor, a replica of the famous DBX160 Stereo Compressor. We're going to take a listen to it on some drums. We're going to take a listen to it on some piano and maybe even some lead vocal. We're going to walk through the controls. And then you can uh, check it out and see what you think of this awesome compressor. And I love this compressor by Audioscape. So before we get started, make sure you like, share, subscribe. And by the way, YouTube Analytics tells me that 70% of you that are watching this video are not subscribed to the channel. So do me a favor. If you're watching my videos, please take a minute. Just click the subscribe button. It really does help. It helps more than you'll ever know. And I thank you so kindly in advance. Also, if you're into uh, mixing in the analog slash hybrid workflow, be sure to check out my two new hybrid mixing courses, hybrid mixing pop, hybrid mixing acoustic rock. Links will be in the description box below if you want to learn more about that. So before we get started, I got to say, full disclosure, Audioscape, like all the videos I do for them, sent me this 260VU compressor so I can do this review for you, but they don't get a chance to see the video. They did not pay me for the video. And you know how I am about Audioscape. I'm an Audioscape fanboy, but you also know that Uncle Dave is honest with you. And I'm going to tell you exactly what I think. So if I tell you something about one of these products, Audioscape or otherwise, you could go to the bank that it's the absolute truth. And then I'm being honest and open with you. So now that we said that, thank you so much Audioscape for sending this to me. So we got the 260 VU. One of the things you get in the Audioscape box, when you buy one of their products, they give you this nice laminated card to tell you about the features. I'm going to throw it up on the screen. We're going to read through some of the features, then we're going to go over and walk through the compressor controls. Although you're going to see an image on the screen, we can walk through it right here, and then we're going to listen to it. Okay, so first and foremost, the thing about Audioscape, they're a small little boutique company down in Florida, in the United States. All their pieces are made one at a time, 100% tested by Chris Yetter, the owner himself before they go out the door. They are not a mass produced overseas making millions of these things. They make them one at a time and they're all made in the United States of America. So when you want to buy one of Audioscape's products, you just can't go to their website and just pick something and put it into your shopping cart. They make them in batches of about a week to two weeks worth of, uh, of uh, units. They put them up for sale a couple of times a week and you have to be ready to go with your credit card to buy it because they do not stay in stock. So if you want to buy one of these 260 VUs, you got to go get on their mailing list, follow them on Instagram and on Facebook, and all the links will be in the description box below so you know when their stuff goes on sale. So it's really, really cool. So if we talk a little bit about the features here, it's handcrafted in the USA, just as I said. It's a 2U rack unit that is original to the original design of the DBX unit. It has the original VCA design, utilizing same uh, exact response and total harmonic distortion. It has, let's see, the original, uh, you know, above and below the dancing lights on it. I mean, it looks just like the 160. Look at it. You know exactly what it is. It has premium handheld selected new old stock components, and they have Antec International Series power transformers, whatever that means, but they only use high quality stuff. Uh, and then they have the, uh, uh, the exclusive or the original Audioscape uh, VU meter. So the thing again about Audioscape, before we go over and listen, just so you know, if you're not familiar, they hand source all the components to get to the original design as much as possible. With all the things that have been going over on in the world over the last two or three years and component shortages and such, they just don't throw any old components in a unit to sell stuff. A lot of times, some of their units were on back order for maybe a few months because they had a hard time sourcing some of the internal components because they're very, very particular about making sure that they get it right. So it sounds right and it's high quality components and you're not going to have problems with it three months after you buy it. Okay, so that's really important. That's a little different than what a lot of manufacturers today do. They'll throw any old thing in there just to cut costs, not Audioscape. So the, what we have today is we're going to be using uh, parts of a song uh, from the band Laney and the Wildfire. This is from their song Dime. We're not going to hear the whole song. We're just going to hear some isolated tracks. But I want to thank you to Laney and the Wildfire, a band out of my great home state of Connecticut, Check the links in the description box below. Go show them some love. Thank you for allowing us to use this session as part of this demonstration. So the way I have the 260VU wired up right now is it's wired up to the drum bus. 
We have our drums with no uh, other compression or any other processing except for a little bit of EQ and some panning on the console coming down to a drum bus. We're gonna listen to this on some drums. So let's go on over to the rack. Let's walk through the controls quickly and then let's listen to it on drums so you can hear what it sounds like. Here we go. Okay, so we're over here at the rack here. So here is the 260 VU. So again, it's a stereo compressor. If we look at the left side, we have our threshold control here with the uh, LEDs above and below, like on the DBX. Uh, we have how much compression we want. We have our, um, our, our ratio here. Then we have an output here as well. Underneath it, we can change the way the meters uh, are displayed with the input level, the output level, or gain reduction or gain control, which is what I have on it here. We have the beautiful VU meters by Audioscape here as well. Now, what we have here also at the top on each side, again, left and right, these are identicals, right, as far as controls go. We have these little toggle switches, and I had these actually added. This is not part of the original unit, okay? I had a modification done that this actually bypasses the uh, threshold control, which will bypass the compressor. And the reason why I have that is because on my SSL origin, on the group channels, on the buses, there is no way to bypass the unit. And there's no bypass button on this particular unit because this is made faithfully to the original design. So I had a couple of switches put in so I can bypass the compressor so we can hear the before and the after, okay? Just so you know that. So the way we have this set up right now, we're doing about a three to one ratio here on the compression. And we're gonna play back some drums and we're gonna listen a little bit. I'm gonna twiddle the knobs and you'll see what we hear. Now, keep in mind, on some of the more aggressive settings, as I compress and turn up the output, when I bypass the unit, the volume isn't gonna be exactly the same because you're gonna hear it louder because the output is cranked up. So I'm gonna to try to, on the fly, level match this the best I can. It's not gonna be perfectly level matched on every single setting based on that, but just listen for things like the snare and the kick and the transients, and you can kind of get a feel for how things sound. So we're gonna start with it off here, and let's play back these drums. Here we go.
Okay, so there you go on drums. So when you're compressing more than 10 dB, it gets a little bit too crunchy, a little bit too smushy or it compresses quite heavily, but that could be something cool for parallel compression if you want to think of it that way. When you're compressing a little bit more conservative, you know, 5 dB or less, um, it really gives a nice tightness to it. It gives it, a, a, it controls the transient, but not too much. It doesn't, cho it doesn't chop off too much of the punch. Uh, but on something like drums or very heavy transient stuff, you can get really aggressive with this pretty quickly. So you got to be kind of conservative. But it also adds a lot of uh, fatness and richness, especially around the kick. Um, it really kind of warms it up really, really nice and gives it a really nice uh, amount of girth underneath as well. So it is really cool on drums. It is really, really cool. It sounds completely different uh, than something like my West Audio NG Bus Compressor, which is, again, a VCA design but it's, um, it just sounds completely different. It's a lot more vintage -y sounding where the something like the Wes Audio is a little bit more modern sounding. So that's on drums. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick break and with the magic of television. I'm going to repatch this thing, come back, and we're going to check this out on some piano to see how this sounds. See you in a second. Okay, we're back. So now we have it patched into our piano bus, Grand Piano. Let's go check it out over there and let's go see how it sounds on Grand Piano. Here we go. Okay, so what I hear in that example, if you've, sometimes it's hard over YouTube to know exactly what it's going to sound like, but what I love about this compressor is it just has that vintage kind of creamy sound. And I know that's kind of like, if you, if you never really heard that or you never really worked with hardware before, you may not, you may go, well, what does that mean? It has that nice, fat, round, creamy sound. It really controls the transient nice, but it doesn't sound like it's smushing it too much or compressing it too much when you're doing less than 10 dB of compression. If you start hitting that needle over 10 dB again, it's gonna crush it pretty pretty well. It may be too much. So this compressor with just a little bit of compression is pretty aggressive in my opinion, and it has a completely different tonal characteristic and vibe to it than, as I said, more of a, than more of a modern style VCA. This is a VCA compressor. My SSL E-Series Dynamics are VCA. Um, my Wes Audio, as I said, is VCA, and they sound completely different. The DBX stuff um, sounds more 
warm, fat, creamy, with just a lot of color and vibe and a lot of warmth. At least that's what I hear in the room here, just so you know. Okay, so now we've done grand piano. Let's go ahead and let's um, let's try it on a lead vocal. So give me a second, I'll patch it into the lead vocals and then we will come right back. Okay, we're back. So we have it patched in now to our lead vocal bus. This is the vocal stylings of Laney from Laney and the Wildfire. Again, make sure you check the links in the description box below. So basically I'm soloing up her vocal. We just got a touch of reverb on it. I took most of the effects off. There's no delay, no processing, just so you could hear. There's a little bit of EQ, but just so you could hear her voice going through the DBX. So let's go on over to the Audioscape 260 VU and let's take a listen. Hey, this ain't some sentimental thing. You got the money, I got needs. Gotta live, gotta love, gotta soul to feed. You can pay me. I am already rich in dreams. So don't try to sell me on your scheme. I know a job's a job, not an identity. Lie, 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 lie. Don't have to love your occupation. Work is what you make it. Hey, this ain't some sentimental thing. You got the money, I got needs. Gotta live, gotta love, gotta soul to feed. You can pay me, I am already rich in dreams. So don't try to sell me on your scheme. I know a job's a job, not an identity. Lie, 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 lie. Don't have to love your occupation. Work is what you make it. Hey, this ain't some sentimental thing. You got the money, I got needs. Gotta live, gotta love, gotta soul to feed. You can pay me. I am already rich in dreams. So don't try to sell me on your scheme. I know a job's a job, not an identity. Okay, so on her lead vocal, a fantastic singer, by the way. Make sure you go check him out. Links will be in the description box below. But unlike the transient heavy of drums and the transient heavy of that grand piano on lead vocals, and I love this compressor on vocals, love it. You can compress pretty heavy. You can compress 20 dB on this thing and it does not sound like it's smushing it too much. It just grabs it and just warms it up and makes it nice and round. She has a couple of spots in those phrases where her vocal gets a little bit pokey, pokes out of the mix a little too much. It just grabs it and squeezes it, but it doesn't sound compressed. It sounds a little bit more reminiscent on a lead vocal um, as the Audioscape V-Comp, the very mute compressor or the stay level. It has that kind of characteristic sound to me. I know that it's a different type of compressor, you know, topology, I understand that, but that's the sound that kind of reminds me of, it kind of reminds me of that stay level-esque uh, type of a sound on lead vocals. So. Where I find myself using this compressor more and more, vocals, background vocal buses, absolutely. String sections, I love it on strings. I don't have any strings here to demo for you today. That's where I tend to use it. Even acoustic guitar, not so much the real rock and heavy strummers, again, because you got a very transient heavy um, material there, but more of the light finger pick stuff sounds beautiful. Where I tend to not like it as much is on things like drum buses, heavy compression, it's a little bit too much for me. Um, big strummed electric guitars, big distorted guitars, big heavy acoustic guitars, those tend, you can use this, but you have to be a little bit more conservative. I tend to like it more on the, on the, um, on the, uh, on the more light stuff, not so transient heavy, if that makes sense. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look and listen at the Audioscape 260 VU. Again, the links will be in the description box below. Go check out my friends at Audioscape. They are fantastic. And once again, thank you to Trevor and to Chris and the whole Audioscape family 
for sending me up this unit. And they're the only, I got to tell you, I've said this before. I know we're at the end of the video. Some people think I talk about this stuff too much, but I'm going to say it again because they deserve it. When this music, mixing music analog YouTube channel first started about two years ago, and we were nobody, nobody, not a single subscriber. No one knew who I was over here. Uh, they were the only company that I ever, that I, that I tried to work with that was willing to work with me and willing to help support the cause of, uh, of, of moving a little bit away from the box and getting more back into the hybrid analog workflow. They've been very, very generous audioscape and I appreciate them so much. They've, you know, they've given us a lot of gear here to do reviews and I've actually purchased some of their gear as well. Um, but they're the only company that was willing to step up. Even companies like SSL who I, you know, spent a lot of money with, uh, had no interest in, uh, in even working with me in any way, shape or form, not to just get a bunch of, not to just get free stuff. That's not what I'm talking about, but just to develop that relationship. Chris and the team over at Audioscape understood what I was doing here, understood what, how I was, uh, going about this whole channel in education and, uh, and trying to share the truth about the way this stuff sounds for people that are in the market for hardware and stuff. And they were one of the only company they were the, not one of, they were the only company that was willing to work with us. And I so appreciate the relationship we have with them. They make fantastic stuff. Yes, I'm biased. I'm a fanboy. But as I tell all everyone that I don't know anyone that's bought anything from their company that didn't like it, but if you didn't like it for some reason, you can send it back and I'm sure they would give you a refund. So anyway, go check out audio skate below. Thank you so much. Let me know what you think below about this compressor. And if, uh, if it's something you're looking into uh, and, or if you have something that's similar, what do you use? I'd like to know below. Now, again, thank you so much for watching the video and staying all the way to the end. Make sure you check out Laney in the Wildfire. Links will be in the description box. Make sure you check out my mixing hybrid courses. Link will be in the description box. Like, share, subscribe, right? 70% not subscribed to the channel, subscribe. And until the next video, I've been Dave with Mixing Music Analog and MixingMusicAnalog.com. Thank you so much for watching me, everybody. I'll see you guys soon.